So I know I already presented this slide, but I kind of wanted to backtrack. And since we're done talking about the troposphere, I talked about that in just the previous recording. Um, I want to talk, mentioned um, something about the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. But this is an important figure because what this says is you would tell me as I climb a mountain it's going to get colder. And that's what this is saying. In the troposphere, which is where you are when you climb a mountain, notice that what this is showing you is the red line is showing you going up in elevation. Right, red line's showing you going up in elevation. But notice that along here, the x-axis, it's showing you what the temperature is as you go up in elevation. So for instance, let's see, this looks about, this would be about, what, five kilometers. And at about five kilometers, you know, you know it's going to vary. But just in general, five kilometers, we could see, um, according to this figure anyway, a temperature on the Celsius scale of negative 10. Does that make sense? So we've gone up five kilometers above sea level. You go up 10 kilometers above sea level and you are almost out of the troposphere. But remember the thickness of the troposphere varies. It's thickest near the equator and thinnest near the poles. But if you go up then to um, 10 kilometers, you are on the Celsius scale. Um, oh, it looks like maybe negative 55. Does that make sense? So here's the thing I wanted to show you, though. I'm going to talk about the stratosphere and the other um, couple layers of the Earth's atmosphere as you go up in elevation. But notice what happens to temperature as you go up in the stratosphere. Temperature goes this way, which is getting warmer. Okay, as you go up in the stratosphere, temperature will get warmer. And on my next slide, I kind of explain why that is, and it actually has to do with, um, you see this maximum ozone here? That's that good ozone layer that um, has been compromised by our use of chlorofluorocarbons, and we get kind of a thinning of the good ozone during the springtime at the poles in that hemisphere. But anyway, that ozone layer acts kind of as a nice little radiator. So that's kind of how we have temperature uh, doing, doing what it does. As you go up in the stratosphere, temperatures get warmer. So in a way, I mentioned um, the term temperature inversion. This is one big temperature inversion. And honestly, and I'll try to kind of explain this down the road, but because temperatures get warmer as you go into this layer of the Earth's atmosphere, it means that um, that it's a it's like it acts as a lid, a very stable sort of environment for weather to to be occurring in the troposphere. So uh, on top of the tropo, excuse me, on top of the stratosphere is the stratopause, just like on top of the troposphere is the tropopause. In the mesosphere, let's take a look at the temperature. And in the mesosphere, the temperature is, again, kind of like the temperature was in the troposphere. As you go up, temperatures get colder. And in the thermosphere, as you go up, temperatures get um, warmer again. So it's kind of alternating. If you remember these four layers of the Earth's atmosphere, you can kind of uh, remember it gets colder, it gets warmer, it gets colder, it gets warmer. Now this bit about the temperature does it really do, do do temperatures really get warmer as you're basically leaving Earth's atmosphere? Okay, warmer, warmer, warmer. Well, at some point you're going to be in um, you're going to be well. One of the things I say about the the thermosphere is it it basically kind of peters out. You figure the air is getting thinner and thinner, more and more sparse. At what point do you say there aren't enough? Um, those molecules or those atoms, those molecules of gas, are not part of the Earth's atmosphere because it's just so sparse. Um, so my point was going to be that you're just kind of petering, it, it peters out into outer space. So what is the temperature of outer space? Now that's a whole other thing, probably don't need to, but it's interesting. So the stratosphere is on top of the troposphere. And you can kind of see it's a thicker, the stratosphere is thicker than the troposphere. And it has, just like the troposphere has the tropopause, the stratosphere has the stratopause. And it harbors that good ozone, that good O3 we talked about. 
um, and generally it warms from the top down. That's why as you go up in elevation it gets warmer and it's related to the presence of the ozone layer. Um, now, as we get farther from the Earth's atmosphere, I think I mentioned this before, we're going to have less aerosols. Um, and we're also, we're going to have less of those variable gases like water vapors. Um, notice this mentions that there are strong winds up there in the stratosphere. Um, all right, on top of the stratosphere is the mesosphere, and that's all I'm saying about the mesosphere. So the mesosphere has the same kind of trend in temperature as the troposphere, in that as you go up, it gets colder. Um, and the thermosphere, like I said, kind of peters into outer space, you know. One other layer I wanted to talk about is the ionosphere, and I think I mentioned this um, a, a segment ago, that the ionosphere we can kind of think as the upper part of the mesosphere outward, and the word, as the word ion, ionosphere, might imply, there are ions in the ionosphere, and those ions, charged particles, are created because of um, radiation from the sun. So um, the ionosphere actually is associated with or responsible for um, when we have northern lights. Um, and if you're in the southern hemisphere, you would look south for their southern lights. Okay, we, uh, the, these aurora borealis. So what happens when we get northern lights has to do with this. I'll put this whole thing up here. How's that? Okay. I mentioned, or we'll, let's see, I'm trying to think, meteorology, we talk more about this in astronomy, but the, the sun is sending um, all sorts of energy, ultraviolet radiation, light energy, the sun is sending us radio waves, go figure, but everything in all directions, not just Earth's direction, but the sun is sending that information, that energy all in all directions. The sun is also sending um, um, an immense amount of charged particles in what um, flowing in what's called its solar wind. So, um, and I kind of, I actually think of myself as a star kind of blowing out solar wind, that sort of thing, in all directions. Um, so these charged particles actually could sterilize life on Earth, is the way I think of it, and I think that's true. Um, if Earth did not have the protective layers, it does. And when I say protective layers, I'm talking about um, the Earth's atmosphere, and I'm also talking about something um, called the Earth's magnetic field, um, or the magnetosphere. But between the Earth's atmosphere and the Earth's magnetosphere, basically those charged particles are trapped. So back to our northern lights. Basically, when those charged, when there's too many charged particles in the Earth's atmosphere, um, um, in, this, in a region known as the Kuiper Belt, what will happen is um, those charged particles will kind of eke, but they'll eke in at the poles, North Pole and the South Pole. And as they kind of um, cascade in, into down through into Earth's atmosphere, they fluoresce, and we get our northern lights and our southern lights. Now, so our northern lights and our southern lights come from an extra abundance, basically, of charged particles from the sun and the solar wind. And um, so we know when this is going to happen. If the sun has, um, is being, has, has some um, solar flares or, heaven forbid, a coronal mass ejection, then we can 